It is Saturday, August 24th, AEW All In Weekend. This is Josh Nason's Punch Out. On today's show, we do a very overdue AEW quarterly business review slash investors call covering April, May, and June. Yes, we're going back a few months. My fault, my bad, a lot of uh, random stuff going on this summer, put it that way. Things are good, but uh, yeah, it's been a few months, but we're going to get in this. A fun conversation about AEW business, both past and current even, of course. We sit on all on the weekends. The big TV deal going to be announced this weekend? I don't think so. Brand thinks it might. Brand being Brand Thurston of WrestleNomics joining me once again. So we talk about that, talk about all kinds of numbers, some interesting perspective, interesting quotes that happened just a few months ago and uh, how they fit into today and all that other stuff as well. So enjoy the next hour plus of myself and Brandon Thurston talking AEW business, current and past on Josh Nason's Punch-Out!, Happy All In Weekend. Better late than ever, or never, whatever the phrase is, I try to say. Or I guess I don't really say because I don't know the phrase. I'm screwing up already. It's uh, almost August. It is, uh, sorry, almost all in. It is late August. And it should have been done a while ago to the Q2 AEW uh, quarterly review slash investors call. I'll blame that completely on myself and quite a summer I've had with uh, the family. Everything's good. Just a lot of a lot of bullshit. A lot of bullshit. Car stuff. You know, yes. kids go kids Well, go well the SEC, you know, the SEC, it did, they... It takes time for the documents to be submitted in the right way. True. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think there is a, like a maybe a thirty day deadline that you do have to submit your your ten Q to the SEC by. So I think we are we are well past that deadline. In fact, um, we may be facing some SEC violations. In fact, well, that's uh, that's unfortunate. Of course, the voice you're hearing right now is that of the man who always makes sure to double check or his. Excel documents and info come from. It's Brand Thurston of WrestleNomics. Brandon, officially well, welcome. What are, you, what are you alluding to? I, I don't know. I don't know. You always got to check those sources. Always yes. got to check them. Are we, we going to be discussing any any internal memos today? Um, potentially, I might surprise you with one. I, I, I just found one. My neighbor actually handed me uh, some stuff, so I think it's legitimate. I don't know. Say you found it somewhere. You, you, you shared a Google Doc with me. Is is this an internal? Uh, memo yes we'll, we'll consider this an internal memo uh, i did not find this on discord though this is actually i created this myself okay <laughs> we can have fun with it at this point i would say um of course uh what this is if you're here for the first time welcome uh brand and i do a essentially a quarterly review of all the aw uh business specific stuff that we know about they're not a publicly traded company of course that would make things a little bit easier but uh, they're not, so we go quarter by quarter and just kind of go through all the stuff we know and some speculation and some in form, some not in form, because it is a podcast. That's how it goes these days, the wrestling podcasters. And some thoughts about the uh, the quarter ahead, which is uh, about a month or so away of ending. Of course, we are it's Friday. We're recording this. This will be up uh, by Saturday. And of course, plenty of time before Sunday's all in. I'm glad to see that you're, uh, you're stateside, Brandon. You decided not to go despite uh, your urges to go. And uh, Pollock and Thursday, I heard you, you talk about your battle with heading overseas to foggy London town. No, I went to Cleveland for SummerSlam and I got my fill of uh, traveling for the, uh, for, the, for the summer. There was a point where I was considering going from my home in Buffalo to what would it be? London and then going from London to Berlin. And then going from Berlin for Bash at, at what is it called? Bash, Bash in Berlin. Berlin. Yeah, yeah. And then the very next day, but with with the time zone changes that you fly over in the process, get to Chicago in time for all out. Mm. Um, but I'm too tired for that now. That's right. I think in, if those in their 20s are probably best mm. set to do that. Single life, you know, no kids, no spouses, no no commitments. Just get on the road and try to get in a press conference and ask some questions about wrestling. You know what I mean? Yeah, Hopefully. or just or just sit in a press conference and not ask a question. That's right. that sometimes that happens too. Yeah, or get stuck outside, not allowed in the venue. I mean, that, that happens, happens sometimes. <laughs> to some people too as well. Um, yes. Well, good. Uh, so we'll get some of the stuff. So again, we're going to talk about uh, Q two, April, May, and June. There's plenty of good stuff here that, um, even though it's a couple months old, 
Uh, very interesting stuff to kind of where we ended up. So you get a little bit of a historical pr perspective here. And really, you know, we'll start with the kind of the big headlines and narratives as they do with uh, the quarterly reviews for TKO and other companies. Uh, it's Bell TV Talk, Brandon. I don't know if you heard about this WBD deal that might be happening, could be announced this weekend. We'll find out. But there was a report during the month that Tony Khan was disappointed with the WB offer, WD offer, the initial offer for TV rights renewal, in which later that day, AEW denied that disappointment with, um, and then said they were they were fine with it or didn't necessarily confirm there was one, but basically denied that was a story. Uh, God Tony, forbid you ever feel any non-positive sentiment about your key business partner. I know exactly all positives, all rainbows, and uh, and lollipops there, and uh, the best relationship ever uh, between those two. Uh, Tony Khan said he could easily be sold on more AEW weekly programming. Their exclusive TV rights negotiating window. Last into the summer, we learned about that and ended uh, apparently on July 29th. Is that the is that kind of the official day that we know now? Yes, I, I put that in your in your doc here. It, it it certainly seems that way, and that aligns with what Fightful reported when it was expired, and nobody's denying that it expired at that time, and that would put it at at or about if we were writing a legal document here at or about July 29th. Got it. And then uh, Tony Wright Khan talking about the TV rights negotiation. There will be a tremendous deal for AEW. Again, very big. And he also said the people on TV would kill for AEW's numbers. So that's kind of where we were at throughout this three month stretch and a lot of conjecture, a lot of um, questions. People tried to get any answers. We had no real kind of uh, the only real kind of like inroads that we made were when the negotiating window ended finally. And yes. and also that there was a first offer. We don't know if there was disappointment or not, but the fact that the offer wasn't apparently accepted, as far as what we understand now, is that there they kind of there had to be some disappointment because they didn't accept the offer. They kind of went back at it. And at this point, we we don't know if other players are involved. We don't know if it's gone out to market. Um, there was a report by Fightful this week that a second offer uh, was made and was uh, more than and you guys by talked, WBD. By WBD, mm -hmm. and that the uh, essentially that the off that it would be double. I think I can't remember the the, the specific phrase. But it was like double what the the current deal was. But of course, as you point out, Pollock and Thurston, there's some confusion in terms of what the current deal is. If it is referring to the initial deal for Dynamite or the new deal when Collision came on board, which we never officially got word about. We've had to kind of guess out how much it is. So right. we don't. I guess the the TLDR of this is we still don't we still don't know a lot, um, but there's a good chance this could get announced this weekend. Uh, we don't know, or it just might be a while. No idea. What, when is this podcast going to be released? Before All In or after? Before. Okay, good. So I think it's very possible that we'll get an announcement at All In. Okay. Um, if we don't get an announcement at All In, this there's not much time left in this contract. Um, and I guess the only reason why you might put it off longer. I mean, if you do have a, another offer. Um, from WBD. I mean, I, and if it's good enough, I guess maybe they'll, they'll finalize it in time to make that announcement. I guess the only reason why you might put it off longer is because there is actual interest they need to continue to explore with other partners. We have no sign that that's that there is any other interest. I've speculated the ones that make the most sense. Just just thinking it through are Fox and Amazon. Um, but uh, Tony Khan was asked uh, on the most recent pre all in media call which was yesterday as we're recording this. And Jason Powell asked him if there has been outside interest, which was my number one um, question. Uh, and he just, he, he would not answer it and said he didn't want to get into specifics. So um, there's no sign that there is any strong outs outside interest, which is the, why am I stressing this? Because that's the biggest factor. If, if AW is going to get um, an increase or not, there are many factors, but the biggest one of all is how many bidders are there for this house. And if you got one bidder for your house, um, you're, you're, you're going to get maybe market value for it. If there are five bidders bidding strongly for this house, you're going to get a great deal. You're mm -hmm. going to sit back and look at which one do I want best. Maybe there'll be a second round of bidding, you know? So that's, that's a big factor. And we just, we don't have any, any positive signs in that direction. Here we are now finally out of the exclusive negotiating window. Right. Um, the one thing about announcing it this weekend is you're announcing a U.S. domestic deal in front of primarily U.K. fans. So there's that factor. I wonder, unless, so I was thinking about today, because during the call, and I don't know if you noticed the, um, 
I think he, 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 his answer is a little bit feisty when he was asked about why dynamite didn't air live in the UK. Mm-hmm. And he got, a, he got, it was interesting the way, and you know, listening to him, all these different calls and stuff, there was something I picked up on. Like, he seemed like a little bit annoyed with the question. I don't know why, cause it really wasn't that like, like uh hard hitting a question. Basically it's like, did you try to get this? And he said, well, um, I wouldn't want to, uh, hurt my relationship with, you know, WBD and I'm, le- I'm it's, a, it'll be illegal illegal Brandon, illegal for me to do this yes the cops would come get him i suppose he's saying that it would be a breach of contract <laughs> somehow and, and maybe there's some who knows what's in their contracts they could have some clause in the contract that says you can never air it um earlier in any section of the globe who knows sure. um is it the case for wb like when wb does their uk tv tapings that are taped like five hours ahead of time to our time are they taped are they are they airing live in the uk no they didn't we got our spoilers okay. from uh from twitter <laughs> and people there yeah it didn't air because for, for, for wwe yeah okay oh so for, so for wwe it aired like for um oh my god when did, where did they just go uh for wales sure. right or the or the the last place wwe went where they had had a smackdown in the afternoon um when they went overseas, they aired it. Glasgow, live. probably. Yes, I think that might have been it. So we aired. Uh, so we we had um, we had someone that lives there in the UK watch it live and do a report for us, and then we did our. So report. it was on television live. Yeah. In the UK. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's that's why that question was naturally being asked then. Right. Yeah. Okay. So for yeah. So for AEW. Um, yeah. Because we had asked, uh, we we're curious if it was going to air somewhere on Wednesday because it was being taped for. Um, that night but if it was going to air live there and it, and it didn't even lay live there in the afternoon so if my the reason i bring this up is because if uh if as part of this announcement he's going to say you'll be able to watch dynamite and collision live here in the uk whenever it airs i can see that getting a pop in, in addition to you know so they're like okay cool we got this domestic deal this doesn't really help us at all but the uk fans might respond if he was to say that my instinct, though, is if this thing is done, perhaps to announce it at uh, All Out instead. You're okay. stateside. You're in Chicago where this thing really began. And the All In spectacle is going to have all this news coming out of it anyway. With All Out, we have, I mean, we have basically what, one match confirmed. We have a, or a title shot confirmed, I, th- I believe. And there are like two matches and that's it. And this two yeah. weeks away. So if, you, if the deal is, is basically done and you're like, let's announce the stateside. I could see that being where where it would be announced versus on, on uh, Sunday. I think we're, we're we're fantasy PR booking here. So like I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I think you could still. I, I see what you're saying in that there's going to be a lot of fanfare and press already on the day of all in. Why not put that big announcement the fall the, is, is all out the following week or whenever it is two weeks later. Um, two weeks later. Um, but maybe uh, isn't there an argument that like it gets even that TV deal gets even more attention because it is surrounded by the biggest event rather than I don't know the one of the ten biggest events the the following the next two weeks, um, and and maybe you could announce it at all in in a way that's like doesn't get into the specifics of of the actual distribution so, but but still presents it in a way that's like we have a huge commitment. And and Tony Khan can stick it to all of his podcast enemies, and we're sustainable for the foreseeable future. I don't know. Yeah. Would Would you want to make the if you're him? Would you want to make the announcement on Dynamite as a as a nod towards your your partner? You know what I mean? I'm just trying to think how he might think. It does make sense. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if it's going to get announced Sunday. For As opposed to doing on a pay per view, where some of it's on Bleacher Report, but a lot of it elsewhere. Yeah. Um. Let's go to some of these other things then. Uh, let's see. We had some uh, talent releases. Uh, we don't get those often in AEW, but they did a round of cuts, not massive cuts. I think it was about you know six or seven wrestlers. Uh, then they re- Tony Khan ended up rehiring one of them, uh, Anthony Henry, because his jaw was broken at the time that <laughs> he was out, and he felt bad, mm-hmm. so he, he brought him back. Uh, we saw increased crossover with um, always a promotion, CML, Stardom, and New Japan. Obviously for Forbidden Door, but CMLL had a major presence on AEW TVs and, and basically kind of essentially ended, uh, for all intents and purposes, the, the AAA relationship. And the WB of, uh, started playing their seats for the same in terms of more cross-promotion and not on necessarily in the main roster, but with NXT and TNA, we'd see that happening. And then uh, with Noah, and they're starting to kind of get out there a little bit more. And as you point out uh, on, on one of the shows, that um, since it was hinted to you is due to 
avoid antitrust issues for WWE. Yes, that's yeah, that's something that I was told that that makes sense, and I don't think that that where I heard that was I think where I heard that was credible, yeah. um, and that makes sense. Is is so is so EW is basically done with with AAA. They haven't officially said it, but essentially, when you have they're Conan, not going to say it. I know, essentially, <laughs> with like you know Conan talking shit and and yeah. saying what goes around comes around, and and all so so is that, WWE gonna gonna make friends with Conan? Uh, I, I mean, who wouldn't want to, right? I mean, it was Max Moon uh, so many years ago there. I, I think I think that makes a lot of sense if they're trying to get into Mexico. Is if you can't be with one, you might as well be with the other and see what you can do to you know make this uh, make this work. Depending on what what their goal is there. If it's just to gain a further foothold or something like that. I mean, they did pretty well when they did, uh, you know, their house shows there a couple months. Are, you know, are Pentagon and Phoenix on good terms with AAA? Uh, I don't think Pentagon is based on uh, some of the stuff that has been reported. Um, there's still some heat there, but you know, money can change that uh, pretty quickly. So yeah, I don't know about Phoenix. There's some question about whether, uh, AEW is going to extend Phoenix's, Phoenix's contract due to, uh, the injury time. So a, a few things to be worked out there. Um, if you remember this, we had the footage of the CM Punk, Jack Perry altercation aired on dynamite. Mm -hmm. And there's all the conjecture and lead up to that. What was going to be shown? Why was it going to be shown? We'll talk about why in a second. But uh, this was the thing. It worked ratings wise for the week, and I don't didn't didn't really sustain. But there was just a a lot of question of of kind of like what's the purpose? Where are you going to get out of that? So they uh, they got some coverage for it. That's for sure. But I don't know if it actually, as we look back in this, I, I completely had forgot this happened until I was going through this list, and I was like, oh yeah, that happened a couple months ago. So yeah, that was. Uh, and, and does it happen if? Punk had not had that interview with Ariel Hawani uh, a couple weeks before. I don't think so. Um, I, I don't think that was a a net positive for them. the The scuffle, it, it it certainly in your mind, in your imagination, for the months that we heard about this this incident, it's you you would imagine it to be much more I don't know violent than it was. Mm -hmm. um, I, I guess what makes it worse and m even more fireable is that he kind of lunges at somebody who we presume is. Tony Khan uh, behind monitors, sort of, sort of obscured, but yeah, yeah, didn't really, uh, didn't really work. I think as, as much as they had hoped. Um, and then uh, this one, uh, AEW partnered with the City of Arlington for a six-show summer series, bringing Collision there on a, uh, a weekly basis. And you had done some reporting, uh, as you usually do with your free of information acts and, and so on and so forth. And I've, I've heard you're considering dual residency in Texas for all the time you've been spending reporting. Yeah. On you you don't need to be a, a citizen to do any public records requests, at least not in Texas. So um, you do in Australia. Well, you need an address in Australia, I've learned. Okay, so. gotcha. <laughs> I have learned. He says with yes. a smile. Um, yes. But as you mentioned the other day, you know, the tax, the tax credits there are... Uh, or the tax laws are pretty lenient in Texas, hence uh, you know like Joe Rogan and all these people are moving there. I mean, well, you've obviously, you've, it, I mean, you've heard their comparisons to Joe Rogan about yourself, so I'm sure I've been compared to Joe Rogan. Well, your f physicality and things like that, haircut and so on. Yeah, okay, and a lot of my theories, I think too. <laughs> um, no, I think so. In, in Texas, in particular, they have this event uh, program through they consider economic and tourism development department or whatever and we've seen we have records showing how that benefited wwe in 2016 for wrestlemania in that year and then when they went back to the same location in 2022 um basically the the local organizing committee which in those cases was like the the sports commission or whatever they went through an application process and, and got fronted millions of dollars so they could pay a lot of the expenses that were associated with running WrestleMania. Um, what happened with the this residency? They got a discount. We know that. Um, was there any any other sort of incentive or, or value that they EW got? Not clear. Another uh, records request has been sent. We'll see if we get any information about that. And that, uh, not not jumping ahead, but that, that does raise questions about what's going on with the um, all-in next year, which is in Arlington. Right. Yeah, I think you said uh, one of the numbers, $232,000 at one point. Uh, but of course, it was trying to factor in, as you mentioned, credits and and all these all these different types of things that can make it more uh, financially feasible for AEW or any uh, company to run in uh, in another place. It's uh, pretty fascinating. Yeah, just $232,000 was the cost of 
this is the cost of using the building. Uh, and there's some some costs baked into that about production and, and about and, and then of course using the esports arena. So I, I calculated it out. It's something like if, if they sold five thousand tickets at forty five dollars, then they they cover that cost just on ticket sales. It looks like they came at least close, probably past five thousand ticket sales based on the WrestleTix estimates of tickets distributed. So um, yeah, is um, and and that's not even considering. You know, whatever, however they do the, do the accounting and consider the media revenue that's associated with collision uh, contributing to those events too. So I'm sure it was a profitable um, event. Yeah. Um, I also, it, this comes to mind. I listened to um, uh, this podcast called The Town with Matt Baloney, who's mm. a you know, former Hollywood reporter, exec, and, and co owns Puck. And he was talking to somebody about all these tax credits, um, essentially tax credit wars with different states and countries in terms of what they give uh, Hollywood productions to come in. It is, it's a pretty fascinating listen. It made me think about some of these things mm -hmm. as we talk about, um, as you've talked about, you know, WWE, the uh, site piece they get and the incentives to come in. You did the piece on um, Las Vegas versus Minnesota, why Las Vegas ended up winning out. And to hear how these, you know, these uh, towns and, and states and so on are, are putting aside all this money, in fact, increasing budgets to try to get Hollywood productions to come their way. Um, even, you know, Canada, uh, London, uh, England, for example, that that's it's big over there. So definitely something to, to keep out uh, more of an eye on and more freedom of information act requests and so on as uh, as we go, because it seems just going to get more and more competitive as, you know, different entities try to get uh, things to come to their their neighborhood. And we did see in this quarter, in this Q2, Double or Nothing got something like, I would have to pull the document up, hundreds of thousands of dollars in a tax credit and seemed to have disclosed what the expense was for running the collision and the, the Double or Nothing in Las Vegas in May, which was, I believe, over $2 million, which is, I suppose, if they're baking in the, the talent cost, that, that that makes more sense. Yeah. I, when I'm following along with that, I didn't really understand how they could, the talent cost with that. Like, are they trying to say that this is how much it, it, they figure out like here would be their pay for this night or you know what i mean when they say talent costs like is that include travel and things like that i couldn't figure that out i would think it includes the travel to get them there the hotels okay. flights cars um all the expense the media production expense which I'm, which I'm sure is in the many hundreds of thousands of dollars you might get to you might get to over a million with the the building rental and everything and the stage hands um I just don't know enough about how AW contracts work. Um, I think it's all guaranteed money. Do you have the same impression? And or I think it's you you're contracted to work X number of dates for this. I think it's a guarantee. If you work more than X number of dates, then you get additional money. So maybe there's some way to to calculate how much we're paying each talent who's who's at the show. Um, I'm sure there are like accounting rules, even even despite the fact that this is not a publicly traded company, I imagine that they are, um, that their, their, their books are audited, <laughs> um, hopefully. <laughs> and then we, of course, we had NFL draft week. If you remember this and leading into this, the dastardly elite attack Tony, Tony Khan during an episode of dynamite, Shad Khan made his debut. I believe this is after dynasty, uh, or it was after double or nothing. I'm trying to remember which this was at the, I think it was after dynasty and, uh, or it was cause he had the drafts in April. Um, Tony Khan then wore a neck brace during the draft, selling it, kayfabe brother, and eventually uh, uh, purchased it. He was going to auction it off for charity. Uh, mentioned that to Rich Eisen, you know, the Rich Eisen show, and then decided to just pay for it himself for a hundred thousand dollars and donate that to Rich Eisen's charity instead. Uh, during during his media rounds for the draft, said that WWE is like the Harvey Weinstein of pro wrestling. And his controversial yes. anti WWE comments got quote unquote tons of coverage for AEW. And was it positive the, coverage though? No, no, I don't think so. I think it was it was more uh, more fodder for social media than uh, than anything. There seems to be an, an impulsive streak that we see mostly off screen from Tony in some of his decisions, in some of his Twitter behavior. In, although we did see it on screen on what was that on NFL Network or on, or on ESPN that he was wearing the neck brace and said the Harvey Weinstein comment, mm -hmm. um, which is alluding to something real, right? It's alluding to the, the sexual misconduct uh, investigations, uh, federal investigation, the civil lawsuit that's that's happening around WWE. Um, but I think you know similar to what we just talked about with the, the you know airing the 
the punk and Jack Perry footage. There's this like, I think, urge to consume this sugar rush in the short term and justify it to yourself that this is going to have a long term benefit, which is totally unverifiable after the fact and tell yourself a story after the fact that, yeah, we're doing better because of it. And I just, I don't, uh, in, in the words of uh, Murray Hodgson, I, I don't buy it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, yeah. I mean, go back yet yeah, as we kind of go through here, almost like a ladder, like the punk stuff, this stuff and, and other things. It's, uh, it, it never seen, it doesn't seem to matter. It's, as you mentioned, I think sugar rush is a great way of putting it. It's a, it's a rush in, in the interim very quickly and it just dissipates and it's never a, influx of business or interest or new profile pieces for those you know mainstream outlets or anything like that it's just it's the same same old same old i mean i think it's, it's no it's, it's not unlike and it includes you know having an outburst on social media like we all um clapped back at somebody on social media and i think we learn and i don't know that tony's learned it yet that that's usually not worth it. It feels good for about a minute afterwards, and you got them and told them how it is. But it 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 ultimately just draws more negative attention and more more you know annoying things to you in the end. And I think it, especially when you're the leader of a company, uh, I think it's unbecoming of a leader to 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 I mean, to do some of the things that he does. He he comes off as like. An undisciplined leader sometimes with some of these choices yes i've been on the end of that from a tony khan uh tweet before um last you've year. been replied to by tony khan yes uh for one mm. i didn't even mention him in how about that that sounds right yeah um have you been on the other other on the receiving end of any tony khan not that you, i expect you to just well any on the receiving end of any tony khan dms no uh, he's, he, he's never dm me before no okay okay this is I've heard that he will DM people uh, and take issue with them at times. Interesting. Huh. Have yeah. you been on the end of that? Can you disclose that? Or, or is this a non-confirmation confirmation? This, we, we can have a whole discussion now here about like what's <laughs> off the record and what's on background. And True. But uh, we'll leave it at that. True. Let's go to some other headlines that happened uh, throughout the course of the month that were notable for business. Uh, the company announced that they were heading to Wales for the All and Go Home shows, which just happened. This past weekend, both Dynamite and Collision uh, taped on a Wednesday night, something I think, uh, you know, depending on this TV deal, we might see more of in the future, these double tapings, who knows, uh, depending on how it turns out financially. Uh, the company did draw uh, a record low rating for an episode of Dynamite that barely topped half a million viewers, and this sent everyone into a tizzy for about a week until things stabilized again. There didn't really seem to be a... a Good answer for why this happened. There was no real competition. I reread through the story uh, yesterday. It was and Juneteenth. I think that's the two major factors. I think so. It was Juneteenth holiday, which is a new holiday uh, for 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 most most states. Um, but they had there have been programs since the Juneteenth holiday became something that was more widely recognized that didn't seem to be as affected. In any case, maybe it had an effect this time. In addition to that, because it was Juneteenth. TBS was not airing the Big Bang Theory. Oh, they were airing right. in, instead. They were airing. Um, the Black Panther. Black Panther, yes. And bef before that, they had aired um, Forty Two, the, the movie about Jackie Robinson. So that's part of the excuse is that oh, we didn't have our our big strong lead in, which I think also raises the question. Oh, okay. So if you didn't have this strong lead in, which which you've got probably the strongest lead in in wrestling. Um, I've, I've heard people when I've said that raise, well, SmackDown probably has a really strong lead in, but who knows what it is because we're talking about things that are outside the, the nationwide primetime window with SmackDown, what's ever on at 730, could be Wheel of Fortune or something, I don't know. Um, but nonetheless, and it's, it's certainly, the Big Bang Theory is certainly a stronger lead in than, say, Law and Order or NCIS or whatever is on before Raw and NXT. So, so stockings. Yeah, I wish. Um, <laughs> but yeah, Walker, Texas Ranger, um, <laughs> mur murder. She wrote, uh, <laughs> not Andy Griffith though. No. Um, so it, it it raises the question of of like if you just weren't in this fortuitous situation where you have one of the most highly viewed <laughs> rerun programs in all of U.S. television on right before you, oh, your average viewership would actually be a few percent lower. It would be like 5% lower all the time. But clearly, in addition to that, there was, it was such an anomaly. There must have been some sort of holiday effect happening there too, in addition to that. 
Yeah, there was also this, uh, I, I don't take sense have the Kendrick Lamar kind of event that was took over yes. social media. So yes. but to, to your point, the fact that they can have so many people be like, I'm just going to move to this instead. I find that that's super interesting to me. You mentioned the lead in and things like that. They have so much of a fickle audience or percentage that they're like, okay, we're just going to go do something else. You know, it's, I find that interesting. Uh, let's see what else we have. Part, I used to have AW announced a partnership with U2s. Never heard of them for collectible figures. Uh, you don't really hear much about their toy sales or anything like that. Just, you know, pictures online and, and such like that. Uh, they so this is like Funko. Is that what, what those are called? These yeah, are like a big head figurines or something. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Is, do we know? If if AW figures are still like widely distributed in department stores like Walmart and Target, the only time I ever see someone mention a figure is when they're trying is a wrestler insulting another wrestler. <laughs> That's really about it. That's only the only time I see that. And I'm not even talking about the CM Punk. Hangman Page stuff is like uh, that's the only time or people I see. celebrating that they have they finally have their first figure. Exactly. Yeah, I don't see. I just don't see much of it, and so I don't really know if they're kind of getting frozen, frozen out, or no interest, or what the deal is. It's very possible. I'm sure there's figureheads right now, literal figureheads that are just you know saying that course is big. I have a whole whole wall full of them. But uh, they also announced a change to the uh, all out date. Uh, thankfully, moving it back from one week after all in to two weeks after. I think that was smart, getting it off the. The Labor Day holiday, you know, Tony does love his bank holidays. He mentioned yesterday about all in. He loves the term bank holiday. Like, that's, it's just funny. Well, that's, um, a, that's a British term, isn't it? I guess. Yeah, he uses that all the time. Um, but yeah, so they moved all out uh, two weeks, still in Chicago and not the United Center, but staying at the uh, the Now Arena, which uh, attendance wise is uh, probably pretty smart for them. Uh, the company, there was there was a report out, I believe by Andrew Zarian, that Forbidden Door is going to be set for Arthur Ashe Stadium this year, kind of changing up that whole thing. Uh, that did not obviously take place. It headed to the UBS Arena instead, and then they later officially announced that Grand Slam would return to the Arthur Ashe Stadium in September for its usual date there. And ticket sales, uh, to no big surprise, are very, very slow for that, according to WrestleTick numbers, as there are for a lot of events coming up, including this Wednesday in Chicago. And they're working a big arena, and I think there's, I think last night when I looked at WrestleTick, it was like 1,800 tickets were out. Like for a a massive arena, thirteen hundred eighty six for Champaign, Illinois, oh on August twenty eighth is the current God. count. Um, and Arthur Ashe Stadium on September twenty fifth is currently at three thousand six hundred and twenty one. Three as of an up, update yesterday, yeah. three thousand for six hundred. That was nineteen thousand. A, a first huge, time. yeah. Well, we'll talk more about that stuff in a minute. Uh, I like this when they announce their entire pay per view schedule for the year. Uh, WWE has done this as well. I like that. Uh, I think it's smart. And uh, yeah, I love kind of knowing ahead of time where places are going, dates, all that stuff as well. Uh, this Ram story about the uh, Oklahoma Athletic Commission uh, issued a warning to the company over Nyla Rose appearing because she's uh, transgender. And uh, this had some obviously blowback from a lot of people. And uh, they're considering a rule change for transgender wrestlers. And so we'll see kind of how that turns out. I don't know when they're planning to go to. So they had a meeting in July, okay. and there was at least there were there were two people I understand from the local independent wrestling uh, scene that were at the meeting, and I understand that the, the it's not set in stone the rule change, but that they it, they came away from that meeting feeling positive that the that the rules would be changed. I think December is is the rough timeline for that, so we'll see if it happens or if. We'll see if AEW goes back to Oklahoma at any point, and then certainly the, the question will be raised. Company announced they're launching a new gaming podcast with Adam Cole and Evil, Evil Uno. Adam Cole can't appear on TV, but he certainly can on a podcast. Uh, company no longer available on Televisa, Televisa Univision's VIX platform. This is one that I was trying to track down and along get some information about the um, the DAZN deal overseas. That basically, that quietly kind of went away. As well, and I think you and I talked about like kind of what what could this mean? Like, are they you know, is it a? Uh, some people thought they're going to try to do the next Netflix thing and combine all these. I'm like, I don't, I don't think so. And I tried to get a comment out of Televisa, but I didn't get make uh, much there. But yeah, in uh, in Mexico and and so on, all of a sudden these these deals, which are multi year deals, they announced like last year, all of a sudden just both just gone. So I thought mm -hmm. that was. 
a little bit surprising there. Uh, they hired their new senior marketing uh, director of live events. I don't think that was Koshi Irby. I think that was the time. That was He's the CEO. So they hired a new yes. new live event uh, production person. I believe might have been from WB, if I remember right. Um, Brian Jeremy Dave, Flynn? Yes. Yes, I believe WWE. It was in his past. Um, the company, uh, Brian Danielson, uh, revealed his contract expired before All In. So right now, as, as he claims, he does not have a a contract with AEW, but he said he wanted to wrestle at Wembley, which he obviously is. And the company said, or Tony Khan said, it was a top priority for them to re-sign him. And at this point, we've heard nothing on either count. And I guess it would kind of lead into the stipulation of if they want to reveal that or anything. But uh, he's certainly going to be there. I can't imagine... Him taking a last second multi million dollar offer from WWE to to, to no show. He could show up at that bash in Berlin mm. uh, right after All In, maybe. Yeah. Um, Jeremy Flynn is is not former WWE, but he is former professional bull riders, which oh, is yes. also TKO. Co Koshe? I've, yes. I've been, I've been uh, reprimanded on my pronunciation. Koshe Irby is yes. also former PBR. Yes, PBR for life. The beer and the bull riding. Uh, there was <laughs> Renee Paquette and RJ City. Uh, there was announced they're going to host Meal in a Match, his new YouTube series. We've had one episode and that's it. So we'll see what happens with that. Perhaps that's a sticking point in this big uh, TV rights negotiations. Uh, the company uh, officially launched this uh, figure fighters game with TNT Sports, this mobile game. I never hear anything about that. Um, they announced this QR code surprise for uh, Follow the Monet, for uh, Mercedes Monet. I think some people thought uh, this could be something similar to the the Bray Wyatt stuff, the, the White Rabbit, and maybe some sort of intrigue. No such intrigue. I think it was just a a, a money thing or something. I, I haven't heard anything else about it, so that clearly didn't work. Company continued their uh, collaboration with Reebok uh, with a Brody Lee honorary shoe. Of course, this falls like the Young Bucks who had their own deal and so on. And the company in, uh, made their past pay-per-views and special events available for purchase on Triller. And bundles or by singles so their uh, relationship with triller uh keeps going and people could buy stuff uh, at, a, at a pretty good discount uh from what i remember the packages were and so on and so forth that's you know years old pay-per-view should be but you know the lack of a streaming service and so on you know if people really wanted to see something and didn't you know have access to it in a br or keep it uh they can actually you know watch these old pay-per-views and you know probably not significant revenue but at least an avenue for people to watch stuff for now yeah i, I came across in some of the uh the disclosures that have been happening because Triller is like uh, perpetually in the process of a merger that they did make a specific disclosure. I sorry, I don't remember what the number is, but they did make a specific disclosure about um, the amount of money that they make from AEW because AEW is such a big partnership for them that it probably rises to the level of being material uh, for that business. If they mm. were to say lose AEW as a partner, it's probably why they had to disclose that. So they do explicitly say uh, AEW provided X percent of Triller's revenue. And it was in the multiple millions. Oh, interesting. Huh. And yeah, that was kind of the other, uh, you know, the other major headlines. Of course, they had three pay per views uh, through this quarter uh, AEW Dynasty from St. Louis in April. An estimate of about 122,000 uh, pay per view buys. Uh, they had a sold uh, 6,287 sold. Don't have an actual announced attendance, but the gate was, I believe you might report this, 401 373. I'm sure yeah, this is Pulsar. Pulsar. Yeah. yeah. So just over 400,000 for, uh, for dynasty there, uh, double or nothing from Las Vegas in May. This was at the MGM grand garden arena estimate was about 134,000 buys, uh, a gate, uh, the Tony Khan said over 11,000 people, the paid, paid number 9,099 for a gate of, uh, just over $582,000 Then forbidden door returned to the, uh, or debuted at the UBS arena in Long Island, New York, uh, pay-per-view range. 122,000 to 127,000 is the estimate. And uh, according to Odi Khan, uh, this has ever been uh, corroborated uh, by Polestar or anyone else, over a million dollar gate from what he said. So, yeah, it was um, yeah, the pay for you still, that range stays consistent. You know, it's not necessarily going up and, and to the right, but it's also not cratering or plateauing at this point. So, you know, consistent revenue. And again, if, uh, if part of this is some sort of the negotiations that include pay-per-view or, or something along those lines, I mean, there's consistent revenue there. So they'd obviously get some, a chump, a uh, good chunk of change for that. But for some reason, I just don't think they're going to let that pay-per-view revenue go. 
possible. I, I, I just don't know. I guess what we're asking is pay-per-view going to continue to be a la carte in its traditional format, or will it be <clears throat> a licensed as part of a new deal on Max or something like that, like WWE pay-per-views are on Peacock? Um, I think the, the going rate for pay-per-view for AEW for a year is something like $20 million. I think I've got my estimate here somewhere. I'm going to look at it. Uh, I have, for this year, I'm, I'm estimating, am I estimating that? I think about $22 million, something like that. In pay-per-view so, revenue? Yes, to net revenue. Yeah. This is not before the split. This is after the split and all sure. that. So something like $20 million is the going rate, I would say, for, well, it's, it's it's what they're getting right so to cannibalize your own business you're going to need something i think significantly more than 20 million dollars to make that deal for that to make sense right um and maybe it's worth you know 30 40 million dollars to max you'd, you'd calculate that by thinking like well what kind of subscribers is it gonna is it gonna drive what's the cost of acu acquisition per customer in terms of the marketing value that we have to invest to get somebody to sign up to max uh aw would be helping to provide that just by getting people to sign up etc um who knows what what yeah. david zaslov will do though zaz <laughs> the the interesting thing with it too is uh max is not cheap to get you can't it's hard you can't really get all these other platforms you can get you can get a you, you should get a pretty good discount you can use codes to get some good stuff i believe their lowest rate for ads is 9.99 a month if you sign up for a year which i did um for no ads i get a disc i guess deal of like 110 dollars a month so it's not you know it's it's not like a, a, a Peacock or a, you know Paramount Plus on the super cheap, but it's it's not it you know it's it's up there with Netflix in terms of cost. We have nine ninety nine with ads, sixteen ninety nine ad free, and twenty ninety nine ultimate ad free, which is multiple. You, you, you get multiple to stream on screen. four instead of yeah. two devices, higher definition, uh, yada yada. And then there's some uh, you can sign up yearly. They're also offering a bundle. Let's just turn to an ad here. They're also <laughs> offering a bundle. You can bundle Max with Hulu and Disney, which are totally different companies, yeah. uh, for sixteen ninety nine a month, right. or no ads for thirty a month. And then the venue thing, which apparently is on hold right now due to uh, legis or, uh, a lawsuit from Fubo. Yes. 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 And, uh, and all that. So we'll see how all that turns Which out. Which is kind of a, I mean, depending on how successful that would have been, is kind of a big deal to AEW in terms of they would have had stronger distribution in theory. Potentially. Yeah. It depends on how many people you think actually yeah. would, that don't have some sort of way to watch it now. Or right. what, what would that what, mean in terms of net ads to right. the entire TV industry? Yeah. Correct. Yeah. So yeah, the, the, how they, how they structure pay-per-view in their new world, I'm, I'm super interested about because you know, they've opened this up to all these different providers, which is good, you would think. Some people are like, I'm never going to buy through BR again. So if you do an exclusive with BR, you're you're turning off people that are like, I have all these issues I'm not going to. I'm more comfortable buying through YouTube or a pay-per-view.com or a Triller. So I would think that, you know, even if they if they stick with pay-per-views, I feel like they probably will. You would not, you would think that they would want to keep this open like anyone can buy this in any way to not restrict anything. Um but yeah, it's kind. Of, I'm kind of interested how that turns out, and I'm also. Um, they've really done more bundling and stuff with Triller, and now they're doing pay per view bundling, like future pay per views from at a discount with Triller, and none of these other companies are doing that. So I'm, I, I find I find that interesting as well. I guess it's, it's possible. So Max is not just a U.S. streaming service like Peacock is, right? Max is, as we learned recently, is is, is now in France as well as Monaco. And there is some <laughs> AW content yes. uh, on demand, not live on there. I guess if they made a deal for pay-per-view content and for live broadcasts, that that would, that Max would probably take over Triller in those markets. Um, but the, I don't know. These are just idle thoughts. I, I, I have no strong sense of like how WBD calculates whether pay-per-views are worth, you know, are, are pay-per-views worth to them? well over 20 million dollars I, I think that that math is hard to, to make to make right. sense but that's just the intuition without getting the spreadsheets out and we also should mention that wbd is not in a good financial spot and those that listen to wrestling podcasts certainly know what's Their going debt on is an asset okay yeah <laughs> yeah and they um 
yeah, what they they wrote down uh, essentially their cable networks. I don't know if I'm phrasing that right, but they essentially they there's a lot of not good financial stuff going on there. That they, it looks like they're probably definitely going to lose the NBA despite this lawsuit, even if they get a payout. It's it's cash. It's not necessarily a year year. You know, you, you're going to lose you're going to lose considerable amounts in terms of what you can get from cable providers. Um, that was the reason that so many speculate that Comcast decided to go in because not only would they then need to pay, they could then pay TNT less or would be the less for using TNT because they don't, or TBS because they don't have the NBA anymore. But then they also steal that away and, and put some more stuff on Peacock, which is a pretty shrewd move. But yeah, WBD, it's uh, not not great to be WBD no matter how many hats Tony <laughs> Tony Khan puts on. But he seems to be loyal to them, so I guess we'll see what happens with it. Yeah, I mean, the WBD is just not as diversified, right, as Comcast, which is doing better because they're ruining your day with with their their telecom. And then Disney is, is not just some TV networks and and a, and a movie and production company, but it's also theme parks and things like that. And we're seeing the skinniest of all. Paramount is now being uh, being dealt or whatever's happening there uh, with Skydance and all that. So I, th- I think it's you know WBD as a independent entity is probably not long for the world mm. which doesn't uh, mean like those networks are going to go away and right. aw is going to die but the, those networks will be consolidated into maybe nbcu or something like that yeah we're still a long ways away we've been saying this for a while we're still a long ways away from these networks disappearing there's a brand value to them and even though those of us that are very plugged in to social are treated to like you're saying people's like oh this is going to die this is going to go away there's a whole giant section of the country that does not listen to any of this at all. And they enjoy flipping on what they flip on and they like easy access. And, and that's that. And I think half of all TV, people. half of all TV time spent in the United States is still through the traditional TV channels. Um, less than half of it is streaming. Another chunk of it is gaming. You can look at the Nielsen gauge every month that they put out. Um, and it's, and, and when the NFL is in season, it's more than half. So it is declining and it will continue to decline. And maybe it'll get to a hard stop point where it's just people over 50 watching, but it's still going to, yeah, as you say, it's still going to, um, it draws, it's still the biggest piece. It's still the, the biggest piece of distribution that there is. So let's go to some, uh, some live events here uh, by my tally. And I need to look at your data. Uh, I had 27 live events for the quarter. Um, I had 13 live dynamites, uh, 10 live collision episodes, 12 total. There were five live. Now I'm not. My total includes dynamite collision, the pay per views, and also Supercard of Honor. Uh, 13 live dynamites, 10 live collisions. There were 12 total. Five live rampages. There was 13 episodes total. Of course, Rampage had a ton of preemptions uh, during Q2, and uh, there was a lot of. Um, three-hour blocks and such on uh, on Saturdays. There was one Battle of the Belts that was live that was held after a collision. Again, three pay-per-views. And I also had uh, Supercard of Honor as well, which drew and announced uh, 3266 to uh, to Philly. No gate provided on that. But yeah, I think it should be, I had to double check, but I'm pretty sure it's right. It's 27 by my count, but I could be off by a little bit. I have only nine dynamites. What's wrong with me? Nine? Oh, I have per- nine dynamites, six collisions. You have 10. For the quarter? Yes. And I have three pay per views. Uh, I'll have to look. I assumed all those dynamites were. That was, you have Battle of the Belts as an independent live event? No, no. It'd be 13, 10. So we do math live in the air. 10, 13 dynamites, 10 collisions. So it'd be 23. The pay per views are 26, and Supercard of Honor would be 27. All right. We'll sort this out later. Okay. We will follow along at home. We'll uh, <laughs> figure that out. Anyway, they had a good amount. We'll get to attendance and stuff in a sec. Uh, rivals and returns. Carlos Cabrera. Even he couldn't change the the turn of attendance. Carlos Cabrera, of course, uh, former WB Spanish language announcer, joined the company during that quarter. Roosh came back. Camille reportedly signed a contract and did in February. Of course, she didn't debut until, uh, I, was it July or this month? Very recently, she debuted. Uh, Alicia Toot signed the company. And later would cause some some trouble with MJF, of course. And uh, R.D. Evans, uh, released by uh, TNA Wrestling or part of Ways, and he joined the creative team in AEW. We had some departures, and I expect you know we'll see a lot more of these as, as time goes on. Quiet departures, as we've seen, like I think it's assumed like Dan Housen is no longer with the company, but it's never been announced that he's not. He's just doing indie dates all over the place. Uh, but Matt Hardy, Arn Anderson, Jake Hager, Mark Henry, Ethan Page, Satnam Singh. 
uh, I say Saddam Singh, he was moved to the the broadcast uh, portion of the uh, of the uh, the roster and not in ring. So I guess we'll we'll say that. Uh, then of course uh, the aforementioned you know mass uh, releases, not really mass, but like Stu Grayson, Parker Boudreaux, uh, again Anthony Henry, those types. So it wasn't a ton of like big name departures, but you know a few people that uh, they just decided just was time to move on, and a few people have got jobs, and a few people have not. Notable, of course, Ethan Page now the NXT champion, and Arn Anderson appearing on WWE TV recently at a big old hug to Cody Rhodes. Uh, some injuries, not a ton of like high-end injuries in terms of you think would affect ratings or affect um, any type of business. But A, Kingston, probably top of the list. Big fan favorite. Uh, Going to be out for quite some time. Ortiz, Juice Robinson, The Blade. Ruby Soho, I've heard her is being injured. More like out because she's pregnant. Uh, Powerhouse House Hobbs, Julia Hart, Yuka Sakazaki, Chuck Taylor, Jim Ross, who is always perpetually seems dealing with something and and uh, and so on. So obviously we hope he's okay. And uh, he's come back since then. Uh, Kira Hogan and Tony Khan said he's considering considering since on uh, Wrestling Observer Radio, considering an AEW injury report show. That would be great. Imagine that for extra programming. Was Tony Khan on the injured list at any point? Uh, due to was, his his uh, damaged neck. I mean, I should have put him on there, but he he recovered. He's a uh, he's built different, Brandon. He's built okay. different. I'm well, looking, yeah, when when you have a lot of wealth, you have access to better health care. I've heard. <laughs> you certainly do. I like this uh, Excel sheet you have up on the screen. You're trying to so, count out the dynamites. Do you want to do you want to sort this out here? This will be terrible audio. Uh, okay. I have thirteen dynamites. Yeah, I, I have, that. I have uh, ten collisions. That's what I had. Yeah, and I have three pay per views, and you have the same. Correct, and then but okay. total, but yeah, for total episodes. So yeah, those are all the live dates. So remember, a few of those uh, dynamite collisions were the the twin bills. So there were twelve okay. episodes total of, of collision. But two of those were taped after Diamond, like one in Worcester, and then there was one at a different place. And obviously, the rampages are just filmed after. So yeah, we're, we're, we're on we're, the same. We're good. We're good now. Uh, Thirteen ten three. You got it. And okay. yeah, and, and I include the Ring of Honor just for because it's a con company. Put it that way. Yes. See everybody. Disagreements can be settled civilly. Imagine that with an Excel spreadsheet. <laughs> we'll bring those to the the uh, presidential debates in, uh, in September. Uh, yes. Quotable quotes as we uh, start to round the bend here. Uh, CM Punk said, "AEW is quote unquote not a real business." And he discussed Tony Khan's leadership on, as you mentioned, uh, Ariel Hanwani show. Khan declined to respond to verbally, but it can respond in his own way, uh, putting the the footage of the all in uh, scrap from last year. On TV, which we talked about earlier, Cody Rhodes said he disagrees with CM Punk's assessment of Tony Khan AEW. Adam Copeland uh, had a big uh, promo uh, responding to "quote unquote" negative BS on AEW Dynamite. Brandy Rhodes said that what she feared with that company being AEW, I was seeing. Shawn Michaels said there's so much talent in AEW. Tony Khan really? said yes, oh. yes. Tony Khan said AEW and WWE's mutual hate is a "quote unquote" natural resource that powers the industry. Potential big free agent name. It's always been talked about. AEW Goldberg said he's not interested in signing because the product is too cheesy. Tony Khan then responded later, said he's a good friend or, or a friend, and said that Goldberg said he wanted to work in AEW. So how about that? Tony Khan says social me social media makes for quote unquote healthy competition in wrestling. Tony said he social also social media does. Yes, yes. Uh, social media and healthy should never go together. No, no. He also said that he's had interest in adding more titles, that being the AEW Mixed Tag Team titles. We haven't heard about that yet, and hopefully never will. Uh, <laughs> I mean, Jesus, we, do we need any more titles in this company between everything? Like, just both companies, well, just stop doing this. It's so well, it's It's crazy. There's so many great wrestlers, though, Josh. There's it so is. many great wrestlers in AEW, and there's so many great matches to be had. And, and I think it would be great to have another great title in, in AEW, so we could have a, a you could more more uh, uh, frequently designate who is great because right. they all are. Yeah, yeah, you're you're getting better at your uh, your Tony Khan long long uh, answers there, positive answers. But I I think with both companies and actually all the companies, it's just it's booking crutches. Just like we need something for these people to do, just them being wrestling, wrestling and being out there isn't enough. Everyone has to be pursuing a specific division in the entire company. So it's like, well, we'll just create a title. We'll create a title. And then you get what we have now, which is people don't know what the importance of each belt is. They need a hierarchy. That's what we always had growing up, and that's what we should have now. What's the, So this will be irritating. What's the, the more valuable title, the TNT title 
or the continental title or the international title? I think, yes, I've had the same question. I think the international title is more, they're trying to make that into the number two. So that's okay. I think in my eyes, it goes world, uh, international, TBS, and continental. Okay. So, so Okada is the lowest rung here. I, I think the title is because he never defends it. Mm-hmm. it just, it's a, it's a Sarah, it's like a ceremonial type thing. I, in that whole thing about how they had this continental crown, this triple crown, they had, I think, for yes. maybe three days. And then there's like, okay, we're done. We're going to split all these titles. In Japan's strong title? Was that gone? It is. It's back with, uh, who has that now? I cannot remember off the top of my head who has it, but no one, no one in AEW has that right now. Yeah. Mercedes Monet has the women's version. Correct. Correct, yes. but the the men's title they uh, they don't have. But yeah, and then of course Mark Briscoe has the ROH title. And, oh yeah, uh, yeah, everyone's split up. Uh, Tony Khan at this point had never met or talked to Shane McMahon. Oh, well, how that would change. Kevin Kelly was going to plan to sue AEW. I include this in here because you know we have to. In every of these reports, they add all the legal stuff in, right, and all the potential yes. lawsuits and things like that. I mean, this could be a multi, multi, multi million dollar suit that could affect uh, the company for years to come. I am searching every day alongside my searches for parties such as Vincent Kenny McMahon and World Wrestling Entertainment. I, I also do an all elite wrestling search and I have been searching for, for Kevin Kelly's real name as well. Uh, I have not found anything yet. At least th- these are federal lawsuit searches. Um, the state level stuff is you got to get further into the weeds, but I've, I'm aware of no, there's one nuisance lawsuit out there that I think WWE is also named in, but there are no federal active lawsuits against AEW currently. Good to hear. Tony Khan also said, I spent more than I planned going into this year on AEW Ring of Honor. So he needs that big TV deal to make uh, make this stuff balance out. I want to have him have a tough Christmas. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Let's, uh, before we go into the five questions for uh, next quarter, kind of our forecast, why don't we go over some of these, uh, these fancy spreadsheets and uh, charts you have here. And we'll start with uh, viewership, Q2 viewership. Why don't you go ahead? It's down. Mm breaking news um uh, <laughs> so we'll look at total viewership first and dynamite's down collisions down now the collision comp is compared to those two most highly viewed episodes last year q2 so you may okay throw that out but rampage is down too uh dynamite's down 17 percent. rampage is down 19 percent. that's in total viewership though what about the demo uh for the demo dynamite is down 19 percent. rampage is down 11 percent collision with that skewed comparison is down 48 percent again that's this entire quarter versus the two episodes in the quarter last year um what about cord cutting cord cutting i think you can offset you know throw in it throw in an offset of about nine percent on these uh these are all worse than nine percent so this this reflects i think a genuine popularity metric here in in the sense of like if you, even if you gave this a 9% adjustment, it's still quite negative. Um, and it, it reflects to me a, a genuine loss of interest in, in AEW's programming. However, what we don't have here, conveniently, is that Dynamite con- con- continues to rank really well. Um, it ranked number one two weeks ago, as we're speaking. And it, it, it's usually in the top five. The most recent Wednesday was against the DNC and there was tons of cable news coverage that was filling up the top 10. Um, but it's Dynamite continues to rank really strongly. Rampage and Collision probably outperform what would be their replacement programming, which would be rerun movies, perhaps the Big Bang Theory. Um, so it's still a valuable TV property and is still in a good position to get a strong uh, renewal. Yep, I would uh, I would agree. And of course, some of these charts you'll be able to see on WrestleNomics. You can subscribe to for just $5 a month. Go to Patreon, search for WrestleNomics, or to go to WrestleNomics.com for the link there. Uh, having said that, let's go to the 18 to 49, what the kids like to call the key demo, correct? I already did that. I just did that. Oh, you did that. I'm sorry. Yes. Yes, you, that's right. That's right. As you went uh, going through that. Absolutely. I was, just, I was so we excited. Get tickets get- next. Yeah, so excited to get the uh, the WrestleNomics uh, read out there. Uh, I j- jumped ahead. Let's go to uh, my favorite because I used to live in this world of attendance. Yeah, uh, let's go to attendance for Q two. Uh, it's down. Mm. That's what that's what how it's doing. Um, so Dynamite is probably the cleanest uh, events type to look at, and Dynamite in this quarter was thirty six hundred versus fifty one hundred in the prior 
year quarter. Uh, collision, again, a skewed uh, comparison because we're looking at it against the United Center and whatever the second collision was. Uh, but it's at 3,100 as opposed to 6,500. Uh, the pay-per-views on average are down. And even in terms of total, despite running, what, three pay-per-views in this quarter versus two pay-per-views in, in the same quarter of last year, uh, the total is is slightly up. It's relatively flat at 25,800 versus 24,200 in the prior year. The clean, If we're looking at what's AW's popularity, I think the cleanest thing to do is look at Dynamite, and Dynamite is down by, what, 29%. Yeah, it's it's interesting with these, and it's just it's a it's a downward ladder, you know, year over year, and you wonder, you just wonder how far it can go, and also maybe the, the wrestling business is down across the board right now, though. Oh, sure, right. Is that WWE? Yeah, yeah, they have a lot of empty seats on hard cam, right? The WWE is in the total opposite direction, uh, really generating from from a similar starting point. These yeah. these two. The, the the TV ratings and the, and the attendance for both of these companies have gone in opposite directions, beginning in the same at the same time, mm. roughly the middle point or so of 2022, when something significant must have happened. Yeah, what what was that again? Uh, There's some some good uh, stock uh, market reporting in the Wall Street Journal. I think. <laughs> that's right, that's right. Certain VKM uh, is a travail. Let's get out there. I wonder. Yeah, I guess we're. I I said I, said, I wonder how low this can go. Um, I also wonder when I mentioned this earlier, I mentioned this last time we did this is like, you know, what can they do to counteract it? I don't know if the return of Kenny Omega will help. I don't, I mean, MJF came back and that didn't help. Um, I just don't know how many more rabbits they can pull out of the hat to really make it feel buzzworthy. There are people like, I have to go see this because look at the numbers. I mean, year over year, it is, it's consistently down. And I mean, you look at, you mentioned some of the advances coming up. It's just, I mean, they're, they haven't made the adjustment, which I thought they would into playing smaller venues consistently. They're still going to these, these large NBA venues and NHL and big arenas. It's uh, for TV. I just, I don't know. I think, I think the, the residency at collision was smart. And I wonder if they'll try to do more of those combined tapings or something that maybe again, depending on what this TV deal is, reduce costs but also you know less live dates to have to uh to pull france from um uh, i'm fascinated with how they try to figure this out and mr irby has quite a challenge ahead of him yeah i i, I think I'm, I'm trying to pull up the numbers now but for q3 i think things are looking a little more flat as opposed to being as negative as they look in q2 so if we look into the future here uh mm. it, it, it's it's plateauing right um as i'm as i'm scrolling and scrolling so dynamite quarter to date is in Q3 is 3,900, and we're halfway, more than halfway through uh, mm -hmm. versus in the same quarter of the prior year. It's 4,900, so it's down about 1,000. Anyway, so that, that wasn't really reassuring. But I think this is kind of what, <laughs> this is what kind of what the company is. It's a, it's probably a, a viable business. It's probably going to become a profitable business when they get a renewal. And it'll exist as an interesting number two wrestling company. Um, now, what do you say to this? Like, well, why can't you just be satisfied with that? Why do you, why do you like have this, this idea in your head that AEW has to like get up and compete with WWE? Doesn't that say uh, a lot more about WWE than it does about AEW? Because a WWE got so bad, their business was so bad that they came close to AEW. Why can't you just be happy that AEW is going to draw 50,000 people? Imagine if somebody had told you six years ago before the launch of AEW that some promotion that's not WWE was going to go and draw 50,000 people to a stadium. You would love that, but now, but now you're just a jaded anti-AEW hater. Yeah. Good point. Good promo. Um, I... I guess I would say that that I, I think there are pretty obvious ways in which it could be substantially, significantly better. Um, in in the sense of like you know it it needs to be a strong alternative, and I don't know what it is. It's another kind of like WWE wrestling program, and it's getting closer to being what TNA was in terms of its place in the industry. It was, it's just, it's becoming kind of WWE light. And there was a reason for AEW's being in 2019 and in 2020, 
and into 2021. And when Vince McMahon resigned and became less involved in creative and seems now to be <laughs> directly completely removed, WWE got better and got more popular. And WWE, law, WWE became, uh, uh, its TV ratings went up, its trust with fans went up, and whether AW super fans feel the same way or not, look at the numbers and that's what it tells you. And at the same time, in you know around 2022, there started to be problems with CM Punk and eventually he left the company about a year ago. And AEW lost not only their top face in CM Punk, but they also lost their top heel, even though he never appeared on screen, Vince McMahon. Mm. And that was such a contrast for, for AEW to, to define itself against, that there was this dissatisfying product out there that was pissing off fans, that was pushing talent who wanted to be creatively fulfilled out of the company to find creative fulfillment elsewhere. And AEW was able to offer a refuge to that. The business utterly changed in the summer of 2022. And AEW has no well-defined identity at this point once that was shattered, in my opinion. Well, we're the best wrestle. That's a difference. Um, uh, but the, we're the best wrestle, just not against each other. <laughs> Occasionally. Occasionally. It's, so like, what, what is AEW's identity right now? I would say an, an AEW enthusiast would tell you that there's better wrestling in AEW than, than WWE. Things are a little more authentic in, in AEW. Um, but I think there's just basically no awareness or, or grappling with the ways in which the wrestling business creatively has created all of these habits that are just so transparent to everybody. And, and the things that Vince McMahon has indoctrinated so deeply into the wrestling business, into the creative of everybody, are, are, it's just we're just goldfish swimming around in water, not realizing we're in water. And I think you look at things like the, the maximum male mxm mm -hmm. the, the to have and, and you look at things like tony storm and look at both of those things and they're getting over and they're doing it well and it's a short-term benefit and look they're getting over how can you how can you be a, a, such a negative nancy against people who are doing well and we're getting over nonetheless it's it's not it's, it's preventing aw from having a more defined identity why do i need to watch aw when there's a a much higher scale version of the same product over here with plenty of content of its own right yeah, it's. Uh, I think I, I, there's no doubt the business has benefited from having AEW in it for a lot of reasons. And think about, I mean, if you just went the in ring alone, there's yeah. 50 to 100 matches we would have never seen, and probably 25 to 30, throw it's anecdotally high end, like apex level shit that we would have never seen without AEW. Just wouldn't have happened. And there's probably more to come, but you're right. What is the identity? And that was always the, the claim about TNA when they tried to make their push was it's WWE light. It's not different. And you wonder with all these changes, again, bring in a lot of voices from WWE. Right. And that's the only pro wrestling promotion. Everything from know. writers to production. People yeah. Yeah. Who have, and I, you know, I put a poll out a few months ago that I, I, I don't read the replies, but I heard people on podcasts talk about it. So it must have made some people angry. Well, what's, what's more like WWE in, in 2019? WWE in 2024 or AEW in 2024? Mm. And I don't think the answer is terribly clear. It's kind of a rhetorical question. Okay. Uh, but I think it's, I, I think that, that, that should catalyze a conversation in that it, it's, it's a lot of the personnel of, of, of W in 2019, not just talent, but people behind the scenes too. Um, I will say this though, that, that AEW and Tony Khan are a wrestling fan. Like a lot of probably people listening to this are wrestling fans. And like, you would never see Minoru Suzuki come out and, and, and have these, these cool matches with people who never, this yeah. is on us TV. <laughs> that, that is astonishing that that's happening where you got Katsuyori Shibata out there doing stuff. Um, so he's going in, into a tape trader place that, a lot of people really appreciate that has been kind of taken for granted and insulted and in, in fact not even not even been related to uh in in wrestling history pre tony Khan. um and that's a really nice thing um but it's 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 an identity crisis in that you are a remedy to wwe wwe fixed itself now what are you yep um and i don't know if there's an easy answer to that um but the better that AEW is, the better it is for the fans, 
for the wrestlers, the more money that AEW makes, the more aggressively they can long-term compete for, for talent. And that's, that's good for everybody. Let's round off with the uh, pay-per-view buys here. So why don't you hit us with these and then we'll go the the final five and we'll go from there. That was in the middle of a, of a, of a chart rant, I guess. Yes. Um, <laughs> chart rants. So we had three pay-per-views in this quarter. Is this the first quarter that's ever had three pay-per-views in it? No, um, this was, uh, we talked about that last time. I'm not... Q1 would have had Revolution and Wrestle. Nope. Let's see. Lisa and Q1. I think I had this in the notes. So it's the second ever quarter with three pay per views. I don't know the first okay. one, but in our notes from last time, I put the second ever quarter with three pay per views. Oh, okay. it would have been uh, uh, last time, would have been um, Wrestle Dream, Full Gear, and World's End, the final quarter of 2023. Right. Okay. Well, this said Forbidden Door, Dynasty, Double or Nothing. They did in the same neighborhood. Uh, Forbidden Door we've got here. And this is, I'm, I'm always hesitant. People always want, like, want me to put pay-per-view number buys on paper. And I'm like, I don't know. We have what's in, in the Observer, which it seems that Dave is getting numbers from like somebody in the, the television industry and extrapolating an estimate onto the the broader TV universe. Um, and Tony will kind of say stuff in any case. 125,000 for Forbidden Door. Dynasty, 122. Double or nothing, 134. So as a total number, this is higher than any Q2 to date. Um, and there's little incremental cost with selling more pay-per-views. So that's that's a, a, a good thing for them over the course of time, right? Um, on average, the pay-per-views were down. Double or nothing was down 4% from our estimate of the prior year. Forbidden Door was down 14% from the estimate of the prior year. Um, Dynasty has no comp. Um, but in total, they did sell 34% more buys by running an extra pay-per-view. Hmm. which is something he's talked about forever is he say he said i don't i think he referenced wcw before um in talking about so you talk about wrestling observer Radio and other places he said you know there's no there's no real detriment to running more pay-per-views he said there's if you look over time there has not been at least by his his assertions and i guess we'll kind of see how the, year, the rest of the year plays out yeah no i think he's right the pay-per-view is a price inelastic product which is to say no matter what the supply is, you basically have the same number of buyers. And that's largely bared out here. And of all the things that are down in terms of TV ratings and attendance, year over year, they're down like 20%, you know, 10% at least. And these these negative deltas of say double or nothing, double or nothing, only down 4%, forbidden door, okay, down 14%. Um, and in a quarter where you put more supply in here than the prior year quarter, two last year versus three this year, and you still, you, you didn't make less money because of increasing the supply. You made more money because of it. Um, and I think you're dealing in pay-per-view with your most hardcore bottom of the funnel people who are the hardest to, if there's going to be a, a decrease in popularity, these are the people who are going to turn away last. And my uh, five questions for next quarter, of course, uh, the media rights deal, which could be revealed uh, by uh, by Sunday when you're listening to this or before you're, or after you're listening to this, could be a couple weeks, could be a month, who knows, but it's got to be soon, uh, as we've as we've mentioned before, uh, the, whatever the final numbers for all in turn out to be, uh, and if, assuming the, the attendance has definitely been out there, you know, over 50,000 are expected, how many are paid, do they announce the pay total like they did last time to be consistent? And does Tony talk about what the uh, gate was afterward, like he did last year? I think that'll be interesting. Uh, he confirmed that they are looking at a an event in Australia. He did not say the word stadium show, but the reporting out there was is going to be a stadium show. So when that happens, will be uh, fascinating as well. Uh, the performance of All Out from all metrics to see, obviously, if they sell out the, the venue. I don't know what the the last attendance count for All Out is, but there's the pay-per-view component while you look up the uh the wrestle ticks uh, listed attendance and just kind of the buzz around it because they'll have two weeks to build to it and we'll see how they do and as we mentioned the attendance woes for weekly tv how do they start trying to turn us around is there anything they can do how low can you go all the stuff we talked about before um, what do we got for uh all out as of the 19th five thousand seven hundred and twenty eight. gotcha 
57. I think last year's did. I don't think last year sold up. I remember that a nine in the number last year. I think it's not a big, not a huge venue. Um, I can look. Uh, last year, nine thousand eight hundred twenty-six, which was higher than the prior year, just over nine thousand. Interesting. Uh, and that was last year's was at the United Center. Oh, that's right. Yes, that's right. And, and every other year, it has been in this now arena. Yes, we are all in. First real all in. Uh, that's twenty eighteen. Right. Yeah, that's right. And last year was the uh, <laughs> after it came a week after CM Punk was fired. And all that, if you remember all that. Oh, yes. Was oh, yeah. 20 years it was, ago. It was days after CM Punk was fired, right? Yeah, because yeah, he was fired. On a Saturday. On, he was fired yes. Saturday of collision. And then, yes. yes. And then Tony Khan went out that night in front of the crowd before TV cameras were on and explained to the United Center of Chicago. Right. I was trying to say the before. Yes. Oh, that. Why yeah. he fired CM Punk. Yeah. Well, time yes. flies. Any other questions for you for the next quarter? Or did that pretty much cover that for you? What you're thinking ahead of her. And to add to the Australia Stadium show, um, and I guess to, to put put this with the, the Global Life Stadium show, the, the all-in show that they're going to do next year, July, um, they're clearly, at least, if, if not trying to get site fees and expecting and hoping to get site fees, they're at least, um, they're trying to create a track record that will help them say, we provide great economic value. Uh, when we run a big show somewhere um, in Australia, and, and we should say the same thing about Wembley here. The first time they go to Australia will be really big. There's a huge novelty factor there. It'll be hard to repeat that same business when they go back, just as it is the difference in attendance of this year's all in versus last year's, whether it be 30,000 or 20,000, whatever it ends up being um, lower, I mean, than the prior year a lot of the 80,000 or the 72,265 that, that actually used their tickets or whatever happened, um, that's boosted by a novelty factor. Not It's it's down not just because maybe AEW is less popular today than it was a year ago, but also because it was the first show AEW ever did in Europe, mm. outside of the US and Canada, in a stadium, the first time they ever did, other than Arthur Ashe Stadium, a, a stadium show. So there was tremendous novelty and history-making factors happening there, just as I think there's a history-making actual draw in this era that exists that did not exist in like prior eras, which made All In in 2018 sell out in minutes, which made um, the, Ma the Madison Square Garden show in 2019 the first time somebody other than WF is going to go to Madison Square Garden in however long. And how quickly that sold out, that people want to be there for history is is a legitimate draw. And all in last year had that aspect, which this year's, it's not the first anymore. I wonder if for next year, based on the success in Cardiff, even though they ran a pretty small venue, I wonder if they'll do, and you didn't see that much of a drop in terms of uh, uh, rating, even though it's a tape show, tape time, it might... I, how many actual tape diamates they've had in the post COVID era? I don't remember really any. It's very possible, but uh, I'm wondering if they do more international TV dates. If they're not going to see that much of a drop off, and you get in front of full houses yeah. and more rabid fans like WB does, like others do, to me that would make a lot of sense. You know, just especially if you're going to go Australia, spend do a couple weeks of TV over there. You're not going to go in just for the show and come back out. That's a long trip just to do one. Yeah, I just don't know what the added expenses of like bringing all your equipment or finding equipment that's overseas, True. and and if you're drawing enough to offset that, but that's 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 definitely something I could see them doing. Maybe that does make sense. Mm. Well, you can hear this man every week on WrestleNomics Radio on Sundays, usually around eleven a.m. Eastern. The first uh, show of the month is always free on YouTube. Five dollars. This week it'll be month. on Friday. This, this week it will be on Monday because. Otherwise, it would be recording right before All In. So yeah. this week, it'll be, it'll be for subscribers only, and it'll be on Monday. And you don't want to compete with the uh, the pre-show, the two-hour pre-show or, or anything no, like that? No, I certainly don't. The, no. the, the, the two-zero hour, I do not want to compete with that, no. with RJ City and things of that nature, no. Exactly. Maybe some Kip Sabian. You never know. You never know. But uh, just for $5 a month, you can get all the action on WrestleNomics.com. You pay a little bit extra, $10 a month to get access to... More spreadsheets, spreadsheets than more spreadsheets than your tax account would pass out 
uh, if you saw all the spreadsheets. You have so much data. To. Yep. So much yep. data. So much data. And uh, obviously, I'm on uh, Pollock and Thurston Wednesdays, traditionally, usually around two to three o'clock in the afternoon. You see that live on YouTube. And uh, what else am I leaving out? I, the, the Patreon, I think, is mainly um, TV ratings reports. So, uh, like the first little section of it you may see on WrestleMongs.com. That's free for everybody. If you want all my breakdowns and stuff for every TV show that comes out, I've got all of that. That's behind the paywall for subscribers. In addition to the quarter hours that I put out for every WB and, and AEW show, um, we've got a pr pretty long two-year-plus streak on, on having uh, a continuity in data for that. Um, and uh, every month on the Patreon, there are these monthly reports that I do, which include things like looking at attendance since the month just finished, uh, an estimate, an estimate of merchandise uh, based on the bestseller rankings of the of the the merch websites, um, and and other things as well. Sounds good. All right. Well, thanks as always, Brand Thurston. Appreciate the uh, the time here you spend every, every quarter and. Uh, Thanks so much, and we'll see what happens. Uh, we'll see us happens this weekend with the big TV deal. A lot, a lot to come. Can you imagine a world without talking about this TV deal? What's going to happen? To wait another five years for this? All this the stuff gold, comes Don't up worry. The goalposts will be moved, and AEW will still be on death store regardless. Oh, that's, that's right. I forgot. I forgot. Always moving those goalposts. Brandon Thurston, thanks so much. Thanks.